Higher chemistry. Unit 3, chemistry and society. Getting the most from your reactants. Industrial processes are designed to maximize profit and minimize the impact on the environment, if we're lucky. Factors influencing process design include availability of materials, sustainability of materials, cost of feedstocks, opportunities for recycling, energy requirements, marketability of any byproducts, and, of course, product yield. Environmental considerations include minimizing waste, avoiding the use or production of toxic substances, designing products which will biodegrade if that is possible. In any industrial process, there must always be considerations made for any recycling of heat and any materials that could be overly energetic exothermically that could cause explosions. Calculations of the mass. Mole ratios for products and reactants are found in balanced equations. If you know two of any of the three in equations like number of moles equals actual mass divided by gram formula mass or number of moles equals concentration times volume, you can find the third. This can also be used further in the equation in a set of calculations usually from the moles to find mass from a second set of equations. The usual units for molar volume are litres per mole to the minus one. The volume taken by one mole of a gas is called the molar volume. The value of molar gas volume is approximately 22.4 litres per mole depending on the temperature and pressure of the environment. It will always be the same no matter what the gas is. So one mole of hydrogen will equal 22.4 litres per mole just like one mole of oxygen will equal 22.4 litres per mole. The units for concentration are moles per litre, M -L -M -O -L -L minus one You can work out quantities of reactants and, by and products using one or more of the following balanced equation, concentrations and volumes of solution, and masses of solute. Think the, tri tri the triangles. Reversible reactions. Many reactions are reversible. A reversible reaction can reach equilibrium in a closed system. This is dynamic equilibrium. A reaction reaches equi equilibrium when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. At equilibrium, the concentration of the product and reactant will remain constant. The Chatelier's principle states an equilibrium will move to undo any changes imposed upon it by temporarily favouring either the forward or backward reaction until a new equilibrium position is reached. This is in effect for pressure. An increase in pressure favours the side with less gas molecules. For concentration, addition of a reagent or removal of product equilibrium shifts to the right i.e. to make more product. Addition of a product or removal of a reactant equilibrium shifts to the left to make more reactants. Temperature. Increase in temperature favours the endothermic reaction. A decrease in temperature favours the exothermic reaction. A catalyst has no effect on the equilibrium position. However, the equilibrium position will be more will be more rapidly attained. Other process uses high pressure, balanced by cost and equipment, moderately high temperature, lower temperature improves yield, but the reaction is very slow. Unreacted products are recycled. A catalyst, iron, is also used to speed up the reaction. Percentage yield is a measure of how much of a product is obtained compared to the amount expected if there was complete conversion. Percentage yield equals actual yield divided by theoretical yield times by 100. 
Using mole ratios to find theoretical yield, I can find the percentage yield. The cost of a feedstock is related to percentage yield and the mass of the product. Atom economy measures the proportion of the total mass of all starting materials successfully converted into the desired product. Atom economy equals mass of desired, produ desired product divided by total mass of reactants times by 100. High percentage yields and low atom economy means a lot of waste products is, is being produced. Industrial processes want efficiency, i.e. high percentage yield and high and high atom economy. Excess. The reaction will be over once one of the reactants has been used up. The other one is said to be in excess. In biology this is called limiting factors. In order to minimise cost, industry aims to have the cheaper reactant in excess where possible. When finding excess, so limiting reactant, always state which is in excess or limited, depending on which has been on what has been asked, and why. Include the numbers as to why. Chemical energy. Enthalpy H is a measure of the energy stored in a chemical. The enthalpy of combustion of a substance is the amount of energy given out when one mole of a substance burns in excess oxygen. We've come across the formula at National 5, EH equals CM delta T. At higher, you will be expected to be able to convert the straightforward energy release, kilojoules, into kilojoules per mole. You would do this by dividing the energy produced by the mass of the fuel used then multiply, multiply by the gram formula mass, i.e. the one mole. This will give you the energy per mole. Hess's law. Hess's law states that the overall, overall enthalpy change for a reaction is the same whichever route is taken. In Hess's calculations, write out the enthalpy of combustion reactions that will give you the required original uh, equation. Reverse any reactions that need to be reversed. And that includes reversing the kilojoules. Then cancel to leave the original require, required equation. And then simply do the maths from each of the uh, original uh, combustion equations. Do not forget, sometimes you may have to double or treble uh, one of the equations. Bond enthalpies. The molar bond enthalpy is the energy required to break one mole of bonds. Where bonds are present in a molecule with more than two atoms, the bond enthalpy will be affected by the environment the bond is in. So a CH bond in methane may have a slightly different bond enthalpy from one in propene. Therefore, the average mean bond enthalpy is worked out. Bond enthalpies are found in the data book. Oxidising and reducing agents. Oxidising agents accept electrons. Reducing agents give away electrons. Oxidising agents are themselves reduced, so tend to become more negative. Reducing agents are themselves oxidised, so tend to become more positive. Metals have low electronegativities, so tend to lose electrons. Non-metals have high electronegativities, so tend to gain electrons. Metals tend to lose electrons when they form ions, so metals are reducing agents. Non-metals tend to gain electrons when they form ions, so non-metals are oxidising agents. The alkaline metals, group 1, are the strongest reducing agents. The halogens, group 7, are the strongest oxidising agents. In the electrochemical series, the strongest oxidising agents are at the bottom left corner of the electrochemical series, while the strongest reducing agents are at the top right hand corner of the electrochemical series. 
potassium dichromate and potassium permanganate, when acidified, both are strong oxidising agents. Examples of oxidising agents are things like bleach for clothes and hair, and can, the fact that it can kill fungi and bacteria, and can help in a, inactivate vir, uh, viruses. Ion electron and redox equations. In an ion and electron sort redox equation, balance the usual atoms first. Balance the oxygen atoms by adding water. Balance the hydrogens by adding H plus ions. Balance the charge by adding electrons to the more positive side. When combining ion electron equations to produce a redox equation, make sure there is an oxidation and a reduction uh, reaction happening. Multiply one or both of the ion electron equations to make sure they both have the same number of electrons. When the equations are combined, the electrons should cancel. Chemical analysis as part of quality control. Chromatography separates compounds according to their relative affinity for the mobile phase and the stationary phase. The mobile phase is a liquid or a gas. The size of molecules and their polarity may affect how soluble they are in the mobile phase. The stationary phase may be paper, silica gel or an inert packing material. The size and polarity of the compounds may affect their affinity for the stationary phase. Working out RF values, the RF value is the distance travelled by the sample divided by the distance travelled by the solvent. Volumetric titrations. Volumetric analysis involves using solution of known concentration to determine the amount of another substance present. The volume of the reactant needed to complete the reaction is determined by titration. Indicator is a substance that changes colour in response to a chemical change. Phenolphthalein goes from pink to colourless. Permanganate self-indicates and it goes from purple to colourless. The end point of a reaction is where the indicator changes colour and means that the solutions have been mixed in exactly the right proportions according to the equation. A standard solution is a solution of accurately known concentration. Dissolve the calculated mass of solid in the minimum volume of water in a beaker. Transfer to standard flask, rinse in the beaker. Dilute up to the graduated mark on the standard flask. The relative accuracy of volumetric equipment are things like burettes and pipettes which allow the volume to be measured accurately. Errors may occur in judging the end point or in the colour change.